Hey guys, it's Tom, and I'm taking a break from the rating climb today to bring you a bit of a different video. I thought it would be fun to look back at some of my early games on chess.com and reevaluate them and show you how much I've grown as a player in the last two years and also uh, how my thought process has changed. So this will be a little bit of a how I thought when I was a 700, 750 rated player versus a, a 1500 rated player. So I thought this would be informative for some of you. Maybe if you're stuck below a thousand, this will help you kind of shore up your thought process to get past that thousand uh, ELO rating mark. Or maybe even, you know, if you're a little bit higher rated than that, but not quite 1500, uh, some of my insight can help you uh, get there. So uh, I just thought it'd be kind of fun too, just to look back and uh, poke a little fun on myself. So I'll probably be doing some of that as well. So I picked two games to go over today. The first one uh, I lost, the second one I won. So let's just uh, jump in and see. Uh, as you can see, you can see the analysis that I see on the, the right side of the screen there. Uh, so I'm just going to go move by move without the engine, just telling you what I would play now, and we'll look at what I played then. So let's see how uh, this goes. So my opponent starts with g3, and I probably wouldn't know what to do at this point, so I probably played either e5 or d5, hopefully. So I play d6. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's more principled to maybe take the center here. Um I would probably now I would play d5 uh, or even just knight f6, something like that. Um, now let's see what, what my opponent plays. So they bring the bishop right out. I think knight f6 is, is fine here. Okay, good. So I did play that. Okay, so they're going for this uh, hyper modern, modern setup, and which is more of even more of a reason why I should have taken the center immediately. So I'm guessing now. Uh, something like e5 is fine. Um, honestly, today, uh, I mean, I would hope that I wouldn't have played this move here. Uh, but maybe I would actually counter Fianchetto, my bishop right here. Um, go for something like this. Um, but I think, you know, taking the center is also good. And I play c c6. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, I don't know why I'm refusing to take the center uh, so let's see what the opponent does probably brings the other bishop out yep and now surely I either take the center I develop a piece or I fianchetto a bishop so I mean I think the way to punish these these lines obviously is to take the center so a move like e5 makes sense to me although it does leave this d pawn weak because I already pushed the c pawn what can you do? Okay, so I at least uh, take the center somewhat. My opponent can strike immediately here, but it doesn't seem very good, so I would imagine they, they develop a knight. Okay, so they play f4 immediately. So... Now... What would I do? I would, I might put my knight here or push here, but I don't think pushing is that good because you run into a move like this and then you gotta see, see if I push and then I can push again and then I get this nice pawn chain. So there's something to be said about that, but it does open this dark square bishop up pretty nicely. Yeah. So I, I would be considering knight d7 just to develop a piece instead of pushing more pawns. I think that's very good here. Um, pushing, I think you can make an argument for. Yeah, one of those moves. And hey, at least I developed a piece. I'm going to lose a pawn here because after it takes, 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 I lose a pawn. But I can't argue with developing a piece. And just sped through those moves. I guess I forgot, hey, what would I play? But, you know, thought that was going to happen for sure. Now, um, 
Certainly, I think getting the bishop right here and trying to trade this bishop off and leaving my opponent with these dark square weaknesses makes a lot of sense and just developing a piece. So, I mean, attacking the bishop that way is not bad, but I still have, I think this was stronger just because I can castle uh, quicker. So let's see what the opponent does. Okay, so they take, now I would probably take with the queen to line up on this rook and develop another piece i take with the knight i i don't think it's as good but what do you do okay so now what can i do here So one thing I'm thinking about right now is that e5 comes with tempo, or e4, I mean, comes with tempo. So something I would be maybe aiming to do here, you could potentially drop the bishop back. I don't like it because it, it's still not developing a piece. Um, so, I mean, this doesn't really pin the knight. Um, so that's good. It's tempting to do something like this, but it, it doesn't really do anything. Um, so I don't like that. I would probably just bring my bishop out to this active square here. So bring my bishop out to c5. Okay, so I kind of maybe force the opponent to do something with their knight or think about their doubled pawns. Um, so they just decide to push my bishop away. And now, I mean, I think coming back to like e7, d6 makes sense. Um, I certainly, I don't think I would want to trade for this, this knight here. I do trade. And now, I mean, I don't want to be the one to trade queens. So I castle here is what I would play now. I even... Might even be tempted to try to save the queen if I could. Like uh, my initial thought was here, but then there, there's this move. Um, only argument for this move is that it wins this pawn with an with an attack on this pawn. So that, I mean, you could you could say that we should trade queens here. And I don't think you would necessarily be wrong. So maybe I would trade, because if king takes, I mean, that that's the problem, is the king can take. You can castle with check, but not a, not a big victory there. So yeah, I would probably castle. So I do take. He does take with the queen or king. And you got to keep giving checks, you know. So now I can win this pawn. So that's what I would just do is snatch that pawn up. And I would uh, certainly take that next pawn. All right. So now castling um, makes a lot of sense. This knight's not really doing much here they can take and take but I need to castle get out of there okay so I do so now I'm wondering how I lose this game let's see what the opponent does here brings the king up So being up a pawn, there's a you know potential to go here, trade off this bishop. Now you're attacking this pawn. It's not a bad thought. Um, I kind of like the the move uh, rook to d2. Potentially um, getting my rook to a more active square, maybe getting behind some of these pawns something along those lines. Um, this rook here, 
just to chase the knight away, I think is fine. So th those are the moves I would consider most strongly. Um, I might even consider this knight move, but um, I don't know. They can just move the pawn, so I don't know. I don't really see the threat there. So I think I would probably play. I would probably bring my. I think you can't argue with just bringing another rook into the game because once this knight moves, if it doesn't move back, you can you got this square here. So I'd probably play rook e8. So hey, you know, like I said, you can't argue with trying to trade off the bishop. I do think I should have tra uh, taken with the knight though. I think the thought here in my 750 elo brain was I attack this knight and I can double the rooks. Um, but I think this is just, mm, I guess, I guess you could, mm. I don't know. Knight, knight takes feels better because you're attacking this pawn. I can't explain why. And maybe, maybe engine would say rook takes is better, but I like knight takes better. So if I know anything about me at this rating range, it's that you have to give a check if you have it available. Having said that, I still think this is a good move no matter what. So I think check here and then collect this pawn is the way to go. Let's see what I do. I checked the other way. So um, I, was, I got it in spirit. <laughs> Uh, so I'm sure the king comes up. I, I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't. Yeah. So what do I do now? Now that I backed myself into this corner, I probably go back. I mean, I probably... What probably happens in this game is I check here. And then we get a trade here. But le I would go back. Forgot to say what I would do. I, I mean, now that I've backed myself into a corner, I think, yeah, maybe you take the knight. But the issue is that now you're giving the 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 opponent connected, pa or uh, not past pawns, but you're reconnecting their pawns. So thinking of that, I probably wouldn't take. I would, I might even go back just to try to threaten this fork if this knight moves. But more likely, and probably what I would do is just go here. Or even here. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it a little bit closer. Rook e8 is, is the move. Maybe I would consider f5 briefly. Because then I do, I don't win a pawn. I can, I might be able to win a pawn. So if I were, if I were to go f5, the king would have to go back or he loses a pawn. So if the king goes here, then I take here, takes. Well, no, because you can, you can then step over. Yeah, I don't think it wins a pawn. So I would probably just go back here or play rook e8. I think rook e8 makes the most sense. <clears throat> so I take the knight. I would assume that I bring the other rook over, but I think uh, checking here makes more sense because then I actually do win a pawn. Okay. And, oh, I think it's obvious that I would take this pawn, but... I'm looking at what I did and I'm just thinking, why? So I think, I mean, I've always, I think, especially at this rating range, I was always looking for tactics and trying to, trying to find tactics on the board. And I, I, you know, you see sometimes in tactics, you have to do weird moves like this. 
and I was probably just looking to to see if I could get the king in some sort of mating net. I don't know. I'm trying to guess what my brain was thinking. Uh, but this is a is a pretty bad move, I think. Um, just doesn't really do anything. Now my rook has to either stay here to protect this pawn or I have to move a pawn to protect the pawn. If the king goes here, um, if the king goes back, I mean, yeah, then I can take with check and take this pawn, but the king doesn't have to go back. And now if I take here, the king takes here. So I think this was just bad. I should have just taken the pawn. And that is what happened. So I don't know. I would probably... Maybe I would do something like this to protect this pawn here. But the opponent has h4. So I take the pawn and hang my other pawn. Oh, and an opponent doesn't take. Hmm. I mean, I would probably take this pawn. But then you allow the rook to get here. Here is a threat. It's a little bit risky, but I would still probably take the pawn. I have three pawns over here. So I give another check, forcing the king to take this pawn. And he doesn't take the pawn. He could still he could take the pawn. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But now he attacks my rook, which is a good move because now I gotta move this rook so. Um, probably right here. I gotta keep my other rook protected. You could even like take here, take, they take back, and then you move your rook to safety. I, I've kind of got myself in a little jam here. So I, I've i played some uh, terrible moves, so I, I would go here. Okay. Now I let their rook in. But they don't even have to do that yet. They could play this move and be kind of sneaky. Although, no, I don't really have a, a mate. Yeah. So let's see what they do. They take the pawn now. And honestly, I'm just in such of a such a bind that maybe I need to come back with a rook here. I could probably also step my king up. I think that's an appropriate move here, just so I don't end up getting back ranked. If opponent goes here, they could back rank me. So I'd probably play king g7 here. I give a check, because why not? When it brings the king back. And I guess now I give another check, you know. I would still play a king up here. I don't know where I'm going with these checks. Still king g7. I hang a rook. Yeah, that's how I lose. So now, now I, I mean, you resign, but I would take the pawn. Yeah, you got to try to get these pawns going down the board now that you've blundered. Opponent goes up. Now obviously, that was a forced move. So now they're going to line up in this pawn, this f7 pawn. You know, move like this is going to happen. So what could I do? I could um Trying to think of a way to 
salvage this and I just I'm not coming up with anything. Maybe something like this to start giving checks. And then the king either has to block the attack on the pawn. So yeah, maybe this is good because if if they line this up, I can check here. The king can't go over here, so it has to block its own attack on the pawn. That's my best thought here. I take another pawn, not seeing the threat here. I mean, and now I just resign. So let's see what I would do. Or let's see what I do uh, in this situation. So I check. And I probably give a few checks until he chases my rook down. Um, but I mean, it's just hopeless. I let him have the pawn. Start pushing my pawns. Okay, so we got some stuff going on. I could push here. That's what I would do. Okay, so I went a rook back. So certainly in this position, I'm going here to trade rooks. Um, I could also consider maybe even a move. The, the reason why I want to go when I, I want to trade rooks immediately is my king is closer to these pawns. And although my king is basically more able to stop these pawns, his king has to come all the way down here to the base of the pawn chain to stop these pawns. And my king is more active and he can't really avoid a rook trade. Um, there's no there's no good way to do that. So let's say rook here, rook here, king takes, and then his king steps up. I just go a5 and I, and I start marching this pawn and he's gotta either run back because he's not gonna be able to usher these two pawns forward before I can get my pawn up the board. So that's what I would do. Instead I go there, which is not it's not bad, but now I gotta get my rook behind this pawn. So and then the king can come up and I'm losing this pawn. So in this position, I would probably push this pawn to, to protect my pawn. Yeah, so he can just go right behind it. And now I don't really have a way to protect it. That doesn't protect the pawn, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so now I attack this pawn, but he can he can push and protect. He goes back. I guess that's fair. Um, I might come up with my king here. All right, so I push my other pawn, just, just itching to lose all my pawns. So he takes there, I take there. I still don't think, um, I should have, I should have just gone here, potentially. But it's tough because I don't think I'm playing this accurately at all. So what can I do? Give a check. Okay. Um, I mean, my only shot is to get behind one of these pawns. So something like this, maybe. So I think I thought I could take this pawn after he takes here. And I, I can't do that. Yeah, he's just going to get the other pawn. I mean, I moving my rook away doesn't... This is just so... 
hard to watch. Now I just hang my rook. Yeah, okay. So I somehow ended up winning a rook back. And then I didn't even capitalize on my advantage here. So yeah, definitely a long way to go uh, to get to 1500. So um, just for um, curiosity's sake, what kind of accuracy did we have here? 69. And this is 69 against a 700 and or 684 rated player so this is not like that that's why i always talk about accuracy being um relative because it makes it seem like so if you look at this report here i played one two three four great moves and the reality is yes chess got chess.com considers them great moves but they're they're great moves against someone who's 684. It's and only because they blundered. So if they play, if they blunder something or um, play very inaccurately, it's very easy to find great moves. And so then you end up with an accuracy like 70%. And this isn't, it's not like you played a 70% accurate game. Um, you just ended up, and it's hard to describe. I'm not saying you didn't play a 70% accurate game. I'm saying that finding those good moves are, it's much easier against a player who's creating weaknesses in their position. Uh, so the, these accuracies are relative. What my take on it typically is, is the higher your accuracy is. So if you're playing 95% accuracies, you're probably slightly underrated. So keep, you know, keep going at it. You, you're climbing up, you know, eventually you'll get to where you're playing you know, in the eighties and you're like, okay, now you're facing some, maybe some opponents that are a, a lot more at your skill level. So, uh, that's not kind of my take. Obviously you can play, you know, both you and your opponent can play poor, poor games, poor accuracy games. And they're, they're te they tend to be the ones that are a little bit more crazy and chaotic and harder to see, uh, through. Uh, so, um, all I'm saying is don't look at the accuracy and let it get you down and don't look at the accuracy and let it, um, make you think you you played a perfect game in the ninety percentile. It's it's um, it's a fun thing to do to look at, and especially if you feel like you played played a great game, it kind of confirms that, um, and it helps you determine how well you're doing against your the level that you're at. I would say, um, but if I played a seven hundred level uh, seven hundred elo player now, I, I would hope that I'm always scoring in the ninety percent. Uh, accuracy but let's let's go to the next game uh so this one i did win so i won some games back then too so uh i can't see anything i do see there's three mistakes and six blunders so <laughs> this should be a fun game so let's uh, hop right in it looks like i have the black pieces again and again i play d6 i don't know why my opponent played e3 i also don't know why um, okay, so they play D3. Uh, certainly, again, like last game, I'm going to say I think developing pieces, taking the center is more principled. So something like E5 at least here would be good. Okay, Knight F6. I can live with that. I can live with that. Okay, so they put their bishop on this weird square, immediately weakening this pawn here. Um, I would play E5 here. I need to be able to get my pieces out, uh, even a move like g6, so I can just fianchetto this bishop. Because, I mean, if you think about this, we're kind of already going for a King's Indian type structure here. I didn't know what the King's Indian defense was at this level. I know I didn't. Um, but had I known maybe fianchettoing my bishop, because by playing d6, I either have to eventually play d5 to get this bishop out, especially with my knight here on f6 or it's just not getting out so um g6 would be maybe if i was just shown this position maybe what i would play um i don't know that i was thinking that far ahead at 
750 ELO. So if I was at this ELO and I was thinking about this position, I don't know what that I would be thinking about the fact that I can't get my dark square bishop out if I don't do something about that. So, but having knowing that now, I would probably play g6. Okay, so I, <laughs> I this is the same thing I did in the last game. Why am I doing this? All right. So now, hopefully, so they, they weaken this pawn too. So g6, please. Please. Okay, so I developed a queen to c7. I mean, at least, I mean, b6 would at least make some sense. b6, I would be poking at this pawn. Not that it's a good move, but uh, I could see that. But I don't know what I'm doing here. Um... Okay, so they launch a pawn forward. Now I kind of wish my queen was here. You know, you get, you get options here. Um, so this move I'm not really worried about. Uh, I, I certainly, e5, I mean, you're going to allow them to play, trade their f pawn for a, a central pawn, so that looks a little bit worse. Um, but this is permanently weak. So looking at this, um, I might still play g6. I need to get this bishop out. I would probably consider knight d7 to then go e5. But uh, probably g6. Let's see. Okay, so I immediately blunder a bishop. So they can take here, and I can't take back, um, or I lose a knight. Uh, I'm, a, I'm predicting I, that all of that happens. I'm predicting I take here, they take back, or they, um, they take here, I take back, they take with the queen. Because I know at this rating range that I would, whenever I would blunder a piece, usually I would you know, think, okay, I should at least get a piece back, but I'm losing two pieces. It's worse. It's it's much worse to do it that way. And my opponent does not take, thankfully. This is why I won this game. I guess they're rated 593, so let's uh, cut them some slack here. So I better take the bishop. <clears throat> I'm losing a piece, so. And I don't. So I'm a... An, an adult with a functioning brain and I still didn't see that I my bishop is hanging yeah so I don't know how to explain this I play e5 because as the saying goes when you a piece is hanging open the center of the board, especially if your king is encastled. That's a little sarcasm, if you don't catch that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, obviously they take, I'm gonna take back with the pawn. But first, I'm going to take the bishop. So my move here is bishop takes, and I don't do that. Opponent still does not realize my piece is hanging. So, what do I do here? I would still take. Yes, I mean, I'm gonna keep you on that, but I mean, I'm guessing maybe I develop a bishop or something. Yeah, it's not even the best square. That's probably better. Certainly, certainly much better. Yeah, I actually don't know why I put my bishop there. Okay, so now opponent is yelling at me, take my bishop, please. So hopefully I do it. Okay, good. Something finally that I do right. Okay, so now um, it's, it's a little kind of scary actually castling into these pawns. I might, I might consider castling queenside here. In a game, I'd probably develop my knight right now. 
just to get another piece developed and, and pro, um, put off castling for just a, maybe a move or two. And I castle immediately. I, I don't think this is bad. Let me be clear. I think it's a little scary and certainly... Oh, now the board is stuck white. <laughs> I don't know why it does this. Um, yeah, I, I now that I'm thinking about it, I think casting is terrible. Um, simply because my opponent's pieces are on this side of the board. Okay, so my opponent can easily play this move, get the knight in, the bishops lined up. And for me to assemble pieces on that side of the board, you know, I, I'm I'm castled. So, you know, let's say castled. I got to somehow swing my queen over, but there's not good access because I've weakened my uh, light squares here. The square is very weak. And this knight could jump right in here. Okay. I'm not drawing arrows very well. So the knight could go right here. This would be a perfect square for this knight. Uh, the queen is poised to attack over here. They have an easy time castling on this side. And for me, I would be kind of like, you know, fumbling to get pieces over, awaiting this pawn storm. Yeah, the more I look at it, the more I hate that I castled. So I think developing the knight and then castling queen side would have been better. But opponent, instead of attacking right where my weaknesses are launches a pawn on the other side of the board where they should be castling. So there's some hope here. Now I would still develop a knight. Let's do it. Nope. I'm worried about this pawn. <laughs> I don't know why. So instead of actually developing a piece, I weaken the b6 square, which right now is not a problem. But eventually, if we trade off some pieces, this could be a problem. So they hang their rook. Well, hang the exchange. So I would take it, certainly. Okay, good. Now they're going to hopefully recapture with their knight. So they recapture with the pawn, weakening their uh, queen side even further. Now I need to develop this knight, get some pieces into the game. All right, here we go. So my opponent, okay, they're, they're, this is good. They're realizing that their attack is on this side of the board. And they need to focus over there. And I need to get something going on the queen side. So I think a move like, um, Rook d8, rook hd8 is looking pretty good because I want to get this knight over here. I want to be able to retreat this knight if I need to. Let's see what I do. Okay, so not bad. Uh, maybe, maybe even in some situations this might be a preferable move, but. I like it here instead. Even a, a move like this where my my knight comes back to e8 so I can go here and challenge the uh, f5 square, I think is something to keep in mind. But nevertheless, this is what I play. An opponent, for some reason, takes their bishop off this really strong diagonal and then starts going after this pawn here, which I have protected three times. So not a good yes you can consider this pawn weak and yes lining a bishop up and attacking a weakness in other positions may be good i just don't think it's this position it looks like they're trying to play d4 um which hey you know fine you can play d4 but your king is still in the center of the board so i don't think it's necessarily a good move so what to do now um you know, you could argue for c5 to potentially clamp down on this um, d5 square, but I'm not necessarily opposed to the opponent opening up the king. So I would play 
I might even just bring my other rook at this point. Bring my other rook, prepare to do something like this. You know, this, maybe here, something like that. And then in the event of this, this, um, I can even potentially uh, take here um, with the rook or even the knight. So I jumped the knight in. I'm not sure what my thought is here. Probably just going after this pawn. So this is this is something that's really instructive, I think, is if you could see the move that I suggested. So a, a move like this, okay? It's not actively threatening anything. However, it's developing my piece to a square. This this rook is undeveloped. And it's developing my piece to a square that where it can become a lot more active, especially considering the fact that I think my opponent wants to play this move. And so having said that, I'm lining my rook up across from the queen. So that way, if they open the center, I have a potential discovered attack on the queen. And this rook is more active on this square. And I'm thinking about, okay, conceptually, what should I do with this position? You know, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Well, my weaknesses are I'm going to get steamrolled on the king side if I don't do anything about that, if I don't get some pieces over there. Um, my strengths are maybe playing for some things on the queen side. But in my 750 elo brain, my initial thought is I can go get a pawn. So... Yeah, I mean, I could go get a pawn, but he can just move the pawn. And wh why is my knight right here? Okay, yes, then I can attack the bishop. But is that really that big of a deal? Have I have I accomplished anything? No, now my knight's on the side of the board. They can bring their bishop back to this strong diagonal. So those are the types of things, instead of making one move threats, thinking conceptually about how this position should look is, is really what you want to do. So... Anyway, um, very instructive uh, moment here in the game. And now my opponent can just still play this move. I mean, yeah, I can get this pawn, and uh, but this bishop is protected. You know, I don't think this is good. Uh, and now they threaten this knight, so at least I, I made a square for my knight. Okay, you could say that. Now, uh, something like this to go here is fine, but I would probably play think about this this move also allows me to blockade this pawn here a little bit so maybe I would play this idea of maybe going here eventually or playing something like g6 to just lock up this side of the board yeah that makes sense instead I just what's my thought here Did I think my knight was just hanging? Or th that I had no squares? What was I thinking here? I don't know. I don't know. I just hung my knight though. So opponent takes the knight. I take the pawn. I'm not sure how I won this game. Right, we're going to find out, but. Opponent ta attacks my queen. So. A move like queen h4. Seems. Decent. I can scoop up this pawn. At the very least I'm pinning a rook here. And then I have things like, see, this is another thing too. If my rook was already here, oops, if my rook was already here and I pinned this rook here, I have a move like this, which is a tactic where they can't take back or I take the queen. And then I'm, I'm taking this, this, uh, rook here. So this, this rook needs to be on this square. Now, I, th I still think that this is a good move here. 
I think it's fine. And I do find that I pin the rook. Good. And I take the pawn. So even here still, um, I think, you know, getting this rook into play here. I don't know what my opponent does there. I think I have time for something like that. So let's see what happens here. Because realistically, this knight can only go here. The reason why I'm thinking about the knight is like, let's say I do this and they want to get their queen up to protect this rook. Or the queen like out of the way of this pin. Um, the best place to do that would be and, you know, to protect the rook and to get out of the pin would be to move the knight and then put the queen here. So I take the pawn. Hey, free pawns are free pawns, I guess. Um, now my king, king is completely open. So if they can get an attack going this way, it's not going to be good news for me. So they take the pawn, uh, blundering their bishop. So certainly I would take the bishop. Okay, I'm not sure why I checked here. Maybe I thought, okay, I'll check first, but then they just block with the rook and then I gotta go check again anyway. And now, please, please take, take the bishop. Okay, good. So now I have the knight pinned instead of the rook, which pr I would prefer to have the rook pinned. Uh, but let's see what I can do here. Let's see what kind of damage I can do. So opponent needs to defend their knight somehow. Okay, and they do. And now we could even double up on the knight. Make the opponent um, make a move like queen over here. King up. Yeah, so I think doubling up on the knight is fine. But after here. Maybe even a move like this. Ooh, actually, this might be good too. So f5, I, I think, should be considered because this pawn is pinned. So f5 might be even better than pinning it with the rook. And then taking the knight on the next turn. So let's see what opponent does, or what I do. Okay, so I attack the rook. I don't think this this is as good as what I was doing or what I was considering. Because now they can move this and then defend the rook and get out of this whole jam here. But let's see. Yeah. So what do I do? I probably go back and check again. <laughs> what am I? Why am I playing like this? This is like, um, it's painful to watch these to, to see how I was playing because it's kind of like the, what I would equate it to is like you're watching your little brother play video games like Super Mario Bros back in the day or something. And you're just like, if you could just give me the controller, I could just do it. Like I could just, and it's painful to watch even though like they're having fun and, and you're, um, you know, you like watching them have fun. It's just painful. It's like, just let me do it just for a minute. Like, I can get you out of this hard level or see, like, I'm like, I could bring this game home. Just hand me the the mouse. I know I, I win, but um, so something to be concerned about with as well is these two pieces could be forked right here. So 
that's also something I have to look out for. So probably going back. So just getting my queen out of there too would be good. So checking, maybe um, getting a piece back over here or having the king run or something. I don't know. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I, I just, I blunder this fork. And maybe there's a way out of it. Yeah, maybe this fork is not as good as I think. Because let's say they do fork and I take here. And can they take there? So if they take there, what happens if I check again? And they can block and I take, block, take, check, move, take the pawn. So I don't think it's de as devastating as I thought, because I think it, there's a way out of it. Or if they don't block, then there's a checkmate. So, but I still think this is terrible. And they do, they fork me. So I, I think, yeah, taking with the knight here makes a lot more sense. But let's see what I do. So obviously I check. I'd like to look at this with the engine afterwards, this moment here. So check, opponent blocks. Now maybe I find, oh, actually, now I can take here with check. So that's what I would do. Opponent blocks with their queen. Why? Why block with your queen? Am I missing something? You know your king can move, right? I could even come here to protect this knight. And maybe I'm missing some sort of crazy checkmate in 15. I don't know. Darn it. Okay, let's go back. Oh, watching it again is still painful. Okay. So they block with the queen for some reason. In um, power move here, the queen is pinned to the king. So let's get this other rook in play. You know, my, my rook is not hanging. Nothing is hanging. Just bring your other rook over and then they have to take your rook and then you take with check let's see what i do here okay i take there that's fine um now maybe bring my other rook over nope okay so now i just take the other rook take my knight take their knight so I'm just pawn grabbing here and I should be bringing my other rook into play. There we go. And then here, certainly just pin. Um, you can even pin this way. Um, actually, even this just wins the knight. So let's do that. And then a ladder checkmate. Yeah. All right, so let me go back to this moment here where there's um, fork. I just want to see. So queen h4 check, knight takes e4, our best. I wondered if, if this would work though.
So knight g g3 is best. Queen f3. So I don't win the the knight back per se. D2, probably bring the rook over. No. Knight takes e5, or queen takes e5. Yeah. So that wasn't so the the check was better. And then if they see this is the problem I have with the check is they could just move their king. But now knight takes e4 is a check. It's still saying, yeah, cuz they yeah, I get it. They can't move they get pinned. So I wonder before I just wanted to see what the evaluation was here. Yeah, see, okay, hang on a second when I castled. So this is fine, fine, fine. And I castle and immediately starts tipping in. Oh, it's still it's still even. Okay. Yeah, so um, I don't want to go through all the game with the engine. Um, this was more of a, a fun exercise to see how how I would play this position now versus then. And and maybe if I was actually playing the game, I'd be putting a little bit more thought into it. And, and you know, there'd be stakes on the line, so I would be ultra-focused and things like that. But I think this is just a helpful exercise to see um, how... Uh, you know, if, if you're in this rating range, maybe some, maybe some of the pitfalls that you may fall into, because uh, I was there too. This is only two years ago. And um, not on top of that, I think this would be fun to look back at um, or maybe even do something like this when I, when I reach 2000, look back at my games when I was 1500 and point out some of the mistakes. So, um, or even, you know, when I was 700. So um, hopefully you enjoyed the video a little bit different than uh, what I've been doing. So um, yeah, if, if so, uh, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll uh, see you in the next video.